Now this is a long overdue video. At some point in any franchise, there will always be that villain that you can't help but love. Come on, you know I'm right. For example, in the Avengers franchise there was Loki, the puny god, or Light in the anime Death Note. So for today, we are counting down the top 10 greatest movie moments of one of the most beloved and popular villains from the X-Men franchise, Magneto. You can't hate him, you can't love him, so confusing man! Young people. Number 10, Magneto vs the Naval Fleet. The newly formed X-Men were just about finished wrapping up their battle with Sebastian Shaw and his minion. This was right after Magneto finally killed Shaw. It was then that the naval fleet from both the American and Russian sides were getting their weapons ready to fire at the beach in Cuba where Magneto and the others were. After seeing the potential of mutants, both sides became very terrified of them and have been given orders to wipe them out while they still can. Fire. Psh, humans, they really fear what they don't understand. Missiles were fired, and just before they went kingdom come, Magneto stops them with his awesome ability, protecting his own kind. At the same time, he turned their own weapons against them. Eric, release them! Sadly though, the humans survived because Magneto's best friend forever, Charles Xavier aka Professor X, just had to tackle him to the ground! But yes, Charles did the right thing. There's something different about him, Mr. Laurier. Yeah, I was having a good day. Next on the list is Magneto escaping the plastic jail. At the end of the first movie, Magneto was arrested and put into a prison entirely made of plastic to ensure that he can never escape. Before anything or anyone can enter a specially made room, they will have to have a full body scan for any trace of metal. The guard's weapons are also made out of plastic so he can't use any of them against them. So he literally has no access to any metal and he has no means of escape. If you think about it, he should have been stuck there until he rots to death, right? Right? Wrong! With the help of his accomplice Mystique, she seduces one of the guards one night in a bar and injected him with a serum that causes blood to have too much iron. Bottoms up. And just like how a waterbender blood bends an avatar, Magneto lifts the guard and pulls out the iron in his blood. Too much iron in your blood. So take note, uh, this is for the men. Do not let your genitals make your decisions. Never trust a beautiful woman. Even if she's drop dead gorgeous. Number 8, Mystique's Escape. A captured Mystique was being moved to a new prison along with other two mutant criminals. And of course, Magneto comes along to break his accomplice free. This is actually an awesome scene. Magneto is shown here waiting in the middle of the road through the truck carrying the criminals. One by one, Magneto handles them at ease, squishing and flicking them aside like bugs. He obviously shows how humans are beneath him. After that, he proceeds to free Mystique and the other mutant criminals. Sadly though, as Mystique attempts to shield Magneto from a trank gun, she is injected with a mutant cure and stripped of her powers. With no more abilities, Magneto leaves her behind inside the truck despite his affection towards her. Now that's cold, bro. You're not one of us anymore. Alright, hold it. Hold it right there. Stay where you are. Put your hands over your heads. Now. At number 7, we have Magneto versus the police. A runaway rogue was kidnapped by Magneto and his men at the train station. Although at first Logan, or Wolverine, thought Magneto was after him. Eh, sorry to burst your bubble, Logan, but not everything is about you. What the hell do you want with me? You. My <laughs> boy. Whoever said I wanted you. Anyway, as Magneto and his crew exit the station, they are greeted by the police. And as usual, they ask the criminal to put their hands in the air. Wrong move, guys. As instructed, Magneto raises his hands and with it, two police cars. He puts his hands down and drops the cars on top of the others. With ease, he takes the police's weapons and points them against them, then takes his safety off. This is really awesome that <laughs> he didn't even need to use his hands for it. The rest of the scene is mostly Charles trying to convince Magneto to stop by taking over the mind of his accomplices. Magneto fires one of the guns at the police. He slows the bullet down to make Charles stop. Gotta press your luck, Charles. Obviously, Magneto wins the round as Charles can't make the hard decisions. Magneto then escapes when Mystique arrives with their ride. At number 6 we have the Auschwitz extermination camp. This scene is the very first peak of Magneto's abilities and potential. Magneto was born during the time of the Holocaust in Poland where Nazis constructed death camps. 
This was a hard time for Magneto as a child because he was Jewish, hence he was forcibly separated from his mother by Nazi soldiers in the Auschwitz concentration camp. This caused him to activate his powers. As we all know, most mutants activate their abilities when they experience enormous stress. Emotional stress is the best trigger. Thanks a lot, Nazis! You're the source of future massive destruction and deaths. Nina? Next up on the list is Magneto's daughter's death. Okay, we can't really blame Magneto for what he did in this scene. I mean, the dude's family was killed by a stupid move of a soldier. One day during work, an accident occurs and a giant metal piece is about to fall on one of his co-workers, so he cautiously uses his powers to save him. However, as careful as he wanted to be, someone saw him and reported him to the police. He and his family were about to run away. Unfortunately, his daughter was taken hostage by the police. As any loving father would do, Magneto turns himself in exchange for his daughter Nina's safety. With the thought of someone taking her father away, Nina uses her power, which is apparently a princess's power. She is able to influence animals' behavior. The guards panic and one accidentally fires his arrow, oh, stupid soldier, at Magneto's family, which obviously kills them. A sorrowful Magneto uses the locket he gave to Nina and to slice the throats of every soldier. At number 4, the coin meets the forehead kill. Magneto has been after Shaw for quite some time since Shaw trained him to be a killer after discovering Magneto's abilities as a child. Magneto was filled with anger and was driven by revenge against Shaw, even more so considering Shaw is responsible for the death of his mother. So when Magneto finally has a clear opportunity, he takes it. Along with Charles and the others, they were able to take down Shaw's submarine to the beach in Cuba as Magneto invades it with the help of Charles. When he's finally face to face with him, he manages to take off Shaw's helmet, then Charles freezes Shaw's actions. No, Charles! Ah! Magneto uses this chance to use the helmet for himself and slowly pierces a coin all the way through Shaw's head. Ah! The very same coin he was making Magneto move as a child. This is actually an awesome scene, really. And to be honest, it was merciful killing. Next up, I am Frankenstein's monster. So while searching for Shaw, he finds himself in a bar where two drunks are talking. He interrupts them, then cheers with them. Later on, he reveals the tattoo number on his arm that means he's one of the children from the Holocaust in Poland. One of the men tries to stab him, but Magneto immediately stops him and uses his own dagger to stab the guy's hand on the table. The owner of the bar attempts to stop Magneto with his gun, but Magneto takes control of his hand by manipulating the gun. Next, he stabs the other guy in the very same hand. Everything happens so quickly, really. But it's just so chill for him, to the point that he was even able to finish his drink first before answering the guy's question. He faces him and then says, Let's just say I'm Frankenstein's monster. So chill, man. I'm looking for my creator. At number two, we have lifting the RFK Stadium. Magneto gives humans a taste of their own medicine. Logan's consciousness was sent back to the past to save humanity, including humans, from extinction. Apparently, Mystique kills the wrong dwarf as it caused her to be captured and her genes used to perfect the mutant killing robots. The new technology was ready for its first close-up when it turns on by itself. It seems like Magneto attached some metal inside, allowing him to take control of the weapons. To make sure Magneto gets the perfect angle for the cameras, Magneto carries the whole RFK stadium across the city. He dropped it when the weapons were being introduced. The RFK served as a barrier. No one gets in or out. Just another example of how badass Magneto is. And finally, at number one, we have Magneto lifting the Golden Gate Bridge. Time can really do wonders to people, especially mutants. Magneto proves that being old isn't all bad. If you think lifting the RFK was awesome, this tops that. Magneto and his army are after the boy whose mutant abilities hold the key for a cure for mutants. Unfortunately, the facility holding him is in the middle of the water, away from anyone's reach. Or so they thought. Juggernaut asked a very obvious and valid point to Magneto. He asked how they were supposed to get there and he plainly stated that he can't swim. Magneto then calmly answered, Leave that to me. Like a diva. They all walked to the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. 
Afterwards, Magneto uses all of his might to lift the whole bridge to take him to the island where the lab is located. Tell me, isn't that awesome? And that's all for today. So what did you think of my list? Let me know in the comments section below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the TV Regent, and hit the bell icon to never miss my new uploads. You can follow me on Twitter at TV Regent and Facebook too. Links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on the TV Regent.